Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video we'll provide the latest updates on Debbie as well as a potential tropical wave threatening the Caribbean. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltivits.com for Wednesday, August 7, 2024. The purple arrows pointing towards Tropical Storm Debbie, still hanging around the southeast coast of the United States. Red is former Disturbance 1, we'll discuss that in a minute. Then we have three tropical waves in the middle of the main development region. The black one is what the models are saying is most prominent for developing into our next tropical system. And we'll discuss that in a bit. So here's the vorticity signature of our tropical entities, the three tropical waves in the main development region on the bottom right. Disturbance 1, or what was Disturbance 1 in the Southern Caribbean on the bottom left. And then north of there is Tropical Storm Debbie, which has re-strengthened since being over water. So here's the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Debbie. You can see thunderstorm convection still just to the north and east and west of our open uh, void area of our low pressure system of thunderstorm activity. And it's currently moving north-northeast at 3 miles an hour. Winds are back up to 60 miles an hour. And it's expected to move inland later on tonight uh, with a secondary landfall in South Carolina and then move interior on the, of the east coast of the United States and eventually into the mid-Atlantic northeast by the time we get to this weekend and into Canada. So here's the... Spaghetti track guidance models that the cone of uncertainty by the, from the National Hurricane Center is based off of. You can see the more agreement now of where this storm's going to go. And the intensity forecast uh, shows that it's going to be pretty consistent where once it makes landfall, once again, it will decrease in strength and become a tropical depression this time. In terms of rainfall totals, uh, the biggest amounts are still going to be closer to North and South Carolina because it's going to take some time for it to get going again. Uh, but once it does start moving into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, you can see how the rainfall totals will be less with the faster movement. But flooding will still be an issue. So here's the key concerns from the National Hurricane Center. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause it to take a chance to read it. And the secondary landfall will make a storm surge of about one to three feet in the, the Carolinas. Here's former disturbance number one. Look a, a little bit healthier thunderstorm-wise compared to yesterday when it was encountering a lot of wind shear. But the National Hurricane Center is not expecting any development from this system going forward. As I discussed in yesterday's video, the models were showing it going into Central America, meaning overland. And overland does not have a chance for development. Now, the new tropical wave that we are watching that has a chance for development is in the middle of the main development region. And actually, there's three clusters of vorticity associated with this uh, thunderstorm convection. The leftmost one is our closest tropical wave. Then we have this thunderstorm cluster in the middle, which is the most impressive. And then there's a, thunder, a tropical wave right behind it as well. And you can see that here on our GFS model. So the purple hexagon is Debbie. Red is former disturbance one. And then our two pink tropical waves and a thunderstorm convection uh, cell developing a vorticity signature in black right in the middle there. So we have our wind shear forecast, and you can see the light wind shear in and around those tropical waves, but nothing that's going to be impressive at the moment, as we do still have some Saharan air layer just to the north of these tropical waves. Now, Debbie, as you can see, is still on the southeast coast of the United States. The reason why it's going to be shifting westward is the... Bermuda Azores High is going to actually strengthen. So when that happens, as you can see over the next two days, it's going to shift Debbie westward, and then it's going to be pulled north 
thanks to this up-level trough coming in from the Great Lakes region. So the combination of the trough, which is the valley, and the mountain of high pressure air pushing this storm westward is going to pull this storm west and then north and eventually northeast as it goes, as the trough moves eastward into the interior sections of the northeast over this weekend. So then we look two days from now on Friday, August 9th, that's when we're going to finally see Debbie start to race off into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Then back into the main development region, the first perp, uh, pink wave will be moving into the northern sections of the Lesser Antilles Islands. And then we have our stretched out uh, tropical wave that is where we are still currently today. Uh, still in the same area, but it's merging with that other pink wave that was behind it. So that's why we see this stretched out piece of vorticity. Low pressure is trying to develop around it. Uh, wind shear will be favorable once it starts moving in a westward direction. And that's going to allow it to maintain its thunderstorm convection and moisture and fight against the Saharan air layer, which the first, uh, as you can see, pink wave lost the battle with so going forward now to day five on monday august 12th our black tropical wave will be approaching the caribbean islands as you can see here but we're going to see this upper level trough with some high wind shear so that's going to erode away at that thunderstorm convection and moisture so it's going to be on the back end of this developing low pressure system then we go one, two more days forward to one week from now, next Wednesday, August 14th. And this is where things uh, could potentially show where this storm could develop. National Hurricane Center is not on board with it yet, but the vorticity signature of this tropical wave will be right around Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. We're going to have a potential up-level ridge over this storm based on the GFS model. And then that's going to decrease the wind shear value, erode away at this upper level trough just to its north and west. And that will protect it and regain its thunderstorm convection and moisture to fight off the Saharan air layer and potentially see a Debbie 2.0 situation where a vorticity signature forms in and around the western portions of Cuba. And then on the European model, we see a, something similar, but a stronger signal that actually pulls north instead of going towards western Cuba. It actually goes through the Bahamas, and this is in about ten days, seven to ten days' time on the European model. So we're seeing support on both models. A little bit stronger on the European once more, as you can see here on the ensembles. But the GFS, as you saw that we went through, does have the mechanisms to support that European development with some numbers of its uh, ensemble model showing development as well. And then beyond seven days, we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. So I highlighted that in purple. You can see the support for that one on both ensemble models as well. Now, after the seven day mark, weeks two and three, in August, as you can see, have a high chance for development as well through the main development region into the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll continue to watch this as we get towards the peak of hurricane season. The middle of August is when we really start to see the ramp up, and this is when that could start to forecast uh, that possibility of coming true climatologically wise. So Debbie still bringing a ton of rain to the Carolinas, but should be on its way by the time we get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday getting out of here. And then we'll monitor the tropical waves in the main development region to see if the models are correct, if it's going to be developing into our next tropical system and threatening the Caribbean islands in about a week's time. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do would like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button 
and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.